What is the best way to set expectations with clients? Hey there, it's Eric J. Olson. You know, a lot of times we struggle here at Array Digital to set the right expectations with clients. And it's very, very important to set those expectations early on because if you don't, well, then you live with the expectations that you set, whether you set them or not. So if you fail to set expectations, there could be confusion, there could be assumptions, and it just leads to problems. And we've learned that the hard way. You know, I was recently speaking with a fellow member of the Entrepreneurs Organization, Lael Sturm, and we were talking about setting expectations. And this clip is from our Facebook Live that we did together. Now, those we do occasionally, um, not just on Facebook, actually. Those are broadcast out to LinkedIn and YouTube and some other social media channels. So if you follow me online at I am Eric J. Olson, then you'll see these notifications pop up every once in a while, uh, usually about two or three times a week, we're talking to another entrepreneur. Those are all up on our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube at journey, you know, go to YouTube, search for journey to $100 million. Anyways, I wanted to play this little clip because I thought what he talked about was setting expectations was really strong. And, you know, it applies not only to here at Array Digital, but I think it's going to apply to your business as well. You know, I came up through the kind of the startup booms and busts and um, and have worked in and with and and even started um, more businesses that have failed than than those that have succeeded. Um, I, 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 you know, in some ways out here in Silicon Valley, that's a badge of honor. Like, you, you know, you, you can't know anything unless you've failed a few times. Um, but I would say I would say that probably the best takeaway that I've had uh, from all of this stuff, and it doesn't have to be a colossal flame out. It could be, you know, making a, a social media post that that either gets some negative feedback or falls completely flat. Um, it could be something just in the kind of in the course of your everyday activity that that you would consider a failure uh, is is fail fast uh, and then learn from those failures. So you know what didn't work about this what could i have done differently um and not and not be down on yourself um and really the flip side of that is uh it's never going to be perfect so you know get something out there get some reaction figure out if it's working or not if it's not working take some lessons and then do it again um and that's you know that's really really true in the era of crafting content for social media i mean i can't tell you how many things I myself have written, you know, professionally or personally where I'm like, I just, I don't know if this is right yet. You know, I, I recorded this video and my, you know, my collar's a little funky or, or like, you know, right. I, I mean, you know, there's so many, there's so many things to nitpick. And I, I think we're our hardest, harshest uh, critics. Um, but, but if you're going to wait for it to be perfect, it's never going to be ready. And if you don't get it out there, then you don't get the benefit from having it out there. So you have to take that risk. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard people talk about uh, this topic as like a MVP, the minimal viable product, or yeah. maybe validating your business. And I, I agree. I think that's extremely important. Uh, just focus on the core of your offering, get that out there, and frankly, see if people will buy it. And yeah. the moment that you put it out there and and, and try to pitch it, you're going to get feedback, and you're going to start pivoting and tweaking. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Well, awesome. Hey, um, I really appreciate your time. If people want uh, more of you, if they want to reach out and uh, interact with you or, um, you know, find out how, how they can benefit from, you know, maybe a future relationship with you, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Uh, so there's a couple, couple of great ways to get in touch with me. Uh, one is to visit our website, uh, which is just lpss.co.co. Um, and you know, there's contact information there. You can, you know, you can get on our calendar. Uh, but another thing is we recently launched a five day marketing challenge for anybody that wants to, uh, really improve their marketing game. Uh, it's, it's totally free. And, and I think you've got the URL there, lpss.co slash 100 million. Um, and you know, easy, easy lessons to consume and then follow up exercises on each of those lessons for five days. And, and after those five days, uh, if you implement all of these exercises, you will find that, that your marketing is significantly improved. That's really cool. I like that a lot. Very nice. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us and, uh, 
when I'm out there in like August time frame, I'm going to reach out to you and uh, ask you about those Please. trails. Yep. Would, would love it. You can park in my driveway and hike right out my backyard. Right on. I will do that. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you, Eric. Hey there, it's Eric J. Olson. I wanted to let you know about my book, Million Dollar Journey, How to Launch a Seven-Figure Business. This is the story of what it took for me to go from freelancer with no clients, no employees, no revenue, to growing a million-dollar business. It took me eight years, and I made a lot of mistakes. And all of those mistakes, and more importantly, lessons learned, are in this book, and we have chapter takeaways, five to 15 takeaways that you could apply right now to your business. Check it out on Amazon, Million Dollar Journey by me, Eric J. Olson.